Well, hello everyone. My name is Miss Jessica. It's great to see you guys again. Today we're going to be focusing on the artist Grant Wood and his famous painting American Gothic. So we're going to go over a little bit about him to know why we're painting it. And then for our materials today for this video, all we're going to do is draw and do a little bit of watercolor. So I recommend grabbing a final piece of paper. So if you have watercolor paper, I would recommend grabbing that. If not, go ahead and just grab your thick paper that you do have, probably your Bristol paper, and then a pencil and your watercolors. Now for watercolors, if you have some sort of palette to mix in, kind of like this. This is just the lid of my watercolors, like so. Um, and I do recommend grabbing that. It'll just make your colors that you're going to put on your paper a lot easier to mix and apply. So if you don't have that, that's okay. I'll try to give you guys some tips to do that as well. Different size brushes will also be good to have. Um, so definitely a medium medium, large, and small of some sort is going to be really nice to grab, and then a towel as well because we're going to be using a lot of water. So if we get it all over our paper, we need the towel to damp it with. This also is a video, so if at any time you guys need to pause to catch up or do a step again or rewatch, please go ahead and do so. But let's go ahead and learn a little bit more about Grant Wood. All right, so I want to show you guys some images of Grant Wood that I have for you to see. All right, <clears throat> here we have Grant Wood. Let me get rid of this for you, please. All right, so this is actually Grant Wood. Um, one, the one on the left is a painting that he has done, and the one on the right is him, an actual photo. And I just wanted to show you guys this one. I like the comparison between the two. He did a really good job with the self-portraits. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's kind of the style that he has is a very is realism. He is a very realistic artist. So maybe you guys have seen some of his work before. I'm pretty sure everyone's seen American Gothic, but this is another one of his pieces. And I, again, I'm showing you guys that realism that he's going for. So early on in his career, you know, he was an American artist and he would paint where he lived. So he lived in the back country of Iowa and he painted people on farmlands, You'll see a lot of those paintings as well, but he had a trip to Europe that changed the way he painted. And that's gonna be really important to what we're going to do today. So this is another image of his farmland paintings. He painted his hometown many, many, many times. Um, he did a lot of different trees. And I, what I love about his style is it is realistic, but look at his edges and the way he blends his paint is very smooth. It's not rough, like textured, grass and it's almost a little unrealistic and this is a style that I can relate to very well like I like this tree right down here um, it's you know it's a tree and you I, I believe it looks very realistic but it has these lines for shading that are a little more jagged even this field down here at the bottom I'm really enjoying the the little peaks of the crops are starting to move back into space naturally, but yet the colors are a little more flat. So that's something I really enjoy about his work. But again, he went to Europe and saw a lot of Renaissance paintings, uh, you know, Michelangelo, Leonardo, those, those people, and even the Dutch Renaissance, Renaissance, excuse me, which would have been in the Netherlands during the time and not in Italy. And he was inspired by that. It changed his whole view of his art, and that's where we get this painting here. This was his first painting he created after coming back from Europe. And I've never made the comparison before, but if you look at the building behind it, it has that beautiful window right here at the top. And this is very, like mimics well a rose window or in a cathedral, cathedral style window. Even the positions of the two figures, they're very stoic, no one's smiling. This is you know, very proper way of drawing someone. And so I just like to, when I see this now, I think of a Gothic painting from Europe. And I really love the comparison. He pushed his realism as far as he could in each one of the figures. Fun fact, which I'm gonna end on today. So each one of these people is drawings based off people he knew. So this is actually his sister or cousin. I can't exactly remember which person. I believe it was his sister. Um, and this is actually his dentist. And I think that's 
awesome. Uh, there's a picture on the internet of the two close together and you can see the comparison, but I just love that he used people he knew to create these portraits. All right, so now that we've kind of learned a little bit more about him, we're gonna go ahead and begin to do the drawing portion of the class. So for this, we're not going to do any sort of practice draw. We're just going to jump right into our final drawing because um, what I want you guys to do today is be very free on how you draw. So grab your paper, turn it vertically, and grab a pencil. Now I am gonna do this in Sharpie just because it's easy for you to see. You guys couldn't really see my pencil lines well, but when we go to do our watercolor in the next video or even our color pencil, I'll show you guys what it will look like. It's gonna look a little more like this. So again, it's a little hard to see because I use pencil, but it's light lines. This is what yours should look like. And we'll get to the coloring, you know, here at the end. It'll, at the end of today, it'll look just like this. So please press very light with your pencils because you don't wanna have to see your lines coming through so much. But I will use Sharpie just for right now. So don't, don't worry, it will look different for you. All right, so during this video, I do want you guys to feel free to pause as much as you need to. Drawing figures especially can be really difficult. And so I don't want you guys to feel deterred, just keep practicing and you know erase, try again as much as you need to. Now what I'm gonna do right away is just take my pencil to find where my heads were gonna go. But you guys um, don't press so hard, I want you to press very lightly. And then we can erase some lines after. So our first figure is gonna come up towards the top right. Now you might have to play with your spacing a little bit. We do want them to be closer together, not so far apart. If you think back to the actual image of uh, Grant Wood's figures, they're not super spread apart. So I'm gonna start roughly about up here and I'm just gonna add an oval for my face. I'm gonna darken that so you guys can see. But again, you guys should be pressing as light as you can with your pencil because we're gonna erase these later. Now maybe even I should scoot them over a little bit, but I'm gonna keep them right there for now because I wanna make sure I have enough space. And you guys can never draw large enough. I recommend drawing as large as you can, super important. Now, my women figure is a little bit shorter than my man here, so I'm gonna move it down a little bit. And I'm gonna draw one more oval. Now, we will erase some of these lines, which is the reason I'm doing pencil for that step, but everyone, again, pencil for you. All right, so I got my Sharpie back. I'm gonna do the rest with the Sharpie because now I shouldn't be erasing too many of my lines. And what I want you guys to do is just make sure you erase lines as we go along and I'll kind of guide you in that as well. All right, so we are going to focus on basic shapes first and then get into details after. So next is going to be the bodies of our figure. So let's start on our lady over here and we're gonna do our neck. She's got a pretty long neck actually. So I'm just gonna add two curved lines down. Now something people tend to do when they draw necks is make them too close together. Necks are actually pretty large. And um, that brings in the realism. And then for her shoulders, they're pretty broad. So we're just going to stretch those lines out, but not all the way off the paper. I'm gonna do mine a little bit closer. Now, you might have to adjust that line because we're gonna put our guy's body in here. So you may be making it longer or shorter. Just be aware of that. I'm gonna keep mine there for now. Now for me, I have a lot of space left here. So if I kept this line going, her shoulders would be way too long. So what I'm gonna do instead is right where, that's my shoulder now, I'm just gonna curve it down as if it's going off the paper. If your paper's maybe a little too large, maybe that just means you need to draw a little bigger, or you can always just stop it, can cut off a little bit of the paper at the top and bottom. That's a little trick I like to do. Um, so that's the just general shape for our women's body today. So I'm gonna go ahead now and move over to the man. It's a little different because we have to change the position of his head. His head, he's bald. So we see the top of his head, which needs to get a little bit more rounded. So I'm gonna use my circle to guide me, but what I'm gonna do is on the sides, his head gets just a little bit bigger on each side, outside the circle. And then what I can do is I start to go down, I can use my circle to help guide the cheeks. I'm gonna have him come in just a little bit. He's a little older, so he's got a little bit more um, shrinkage in the face. And then for his jaw, I'm gonna keep it a little bit more chiseled there. So you guys can kind of see, um, you know, we might have to erase and adjust a couple times, but men tend to have more chiseled features and women tend to have a little bit more softer features. That's just kind of a general rule when drawing and when you see people in real life. So that kind of might help you to uh, like determine between this one is male and this one is female. 
Um, so that's just a little bit of guide for when we do their faces as well. We wanna keep harder features for a male and a little bit softer for a female. Now for the neck, this time we're gonna go to the end and we're just gonna kind of diagonal our lines inward a little bit more. And now it's not very long, his neck is a little shorter. And then we're just gonna curve our lines out for the shoulders. Now I'm gonna give him pretty broad shoulders. He's a little bit in front of her. And you know, men do tend to have a little bit broader shoulders. Again, this isn't true for everyone. I just wanna let you guys know, but just general rule when drawing figures, it just helps your um, male and female figures stand apart. Now I do want him to have longer shoulders. So now I'm gonna start to bring my line down. Now he's wearing a big overcoat over his overalls here. And and t-shirt. So what I'm gonna do is you could just draw a slanted line down. Totally fine, go back and work about the clothes later. But what I'm gonna do is round his shoulder and then I'm going to add a little bit of wave at the end. And that's just to show the bottom of his outfit. It's a big overcoat where his arm might come out. All right, so at this point too, I want you guys to take an eraser and erase the line in the head you don't need anymore. So for me, it's just gonna be this top part and a little bit at the jaw. I kind of kept my oval at the bottom pretty much the same. So you might have to go back and kind of redraw anything that you maybe erase, so don't worry. Now we're gonna kind of get detailed into the face. So at this point, if you need a pause, stop, kind of take a breather, fix anything you need to, go for it. But then we're gonna kind of move into the facial structure. I'm gonna begin with my female over here, my lady, and I'm just gonna kind of move on from there. So. For her, she's kind of turned her head a little bit towards the side. Actually, it looks, in the real picture, she's looking outward to off like this angle of this uh, picture, so a little bit over here. So we want to kind of mimic that as well. So right in the middle, we're going to draw two curved lines for the tops of the eyes, but my first one's going to be pretty close to the side of the head, and then I'm going to draw one more next to that. And right now, I'm just going to do a basic shape of where I'm going to draw all of the features. So next we're gonna jump down. So after eyes in the middle, our nose is between our eyes and our chin here. So it's gonna be well, roughly about here. And I'm gonna do a little curve on the side. And that's gonna be the side of her nose because again, she's kind of turned a little bit from the viewer. And then between the nose and the chin is the lips. And we're just going to draw um, a basic line for that as well, because we don't want to worry about any details just quite yet. So I'm just gonna draw a little straight line. No one's really smiling in this picture either. No one really smiled back then for a lot of things. <laughs> so we're not going to today. Okay, I'm gonna jump to my man here and we're gonna do the same thing in the middle, but he's looking at us. So we're just gonna go to the middle and we're just gonna add our two curved lines, the tops of the eyes. And then again, halfway between eye and chin, we have nose. This time we're gonna do the middle of the nose. I'm just gonna add a little curve. And then for him, he's definitely not smiling. So he just gets a straight line. He's a very stoic man in the picture. Now, again, I'm using Sharpie, so mine's gonna look just a little bit different as we go, but I want you guys to not worry so much about that. Just keep, you might have to erase and try again multiple times for the faces. Um, it's just how it goes sometimes, especially when we draw people in proportion. So don't worry. I'm going to encourage you guys just to keep trying um, over and over. So we're just going to connect the bottoms of the eyes on both sides. And then it's in the middle, we're just going to draw two curved lines, almost like two parentheses. Um, it's a little hard to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab another piece of paper and I'm going to kind of show you guys some of the details that we've done just a little bit larger. So I'm going to do a larger circle for my man and a smaller circle for my woman. And those are not proportions, so don't worry. <laughs> All right, so two eyes, it might even be a little too big, we'll see. Nose and our mouth. So again, I just connected the bottoms and then I added my two curved lines inside. Now I'm going to jump back and forth here. So I'm going to jump to my larger photo. And for my nose, what we're gonna do is right about where, oh, let's not forget eyebrows. So we're just gonna draw two curved lines above the eyes. And then right about where the eye meets, I'm just gonna go next to it and I'm gonna draw a straight and then slightly slanted line down. And then I'll drop back to my larger one. Let me get rid of some eyebrows here. So again, I get 
coming down, side of our nose. So now for the rest of the nose, we're just gonna do a little rainbow, a little curved line there, and one more on the other side, and then just finish her nostril. So a little more simple details there. She's a little older, not so much, so we're just gonna give her a smile line on the left. And then for her lips, again, she's kind of turned a little sideways, so her lips are a little uneven, but I'm just gonna give her some a little more fuller lips. Now what I tend to do, especially when someone doesn't have an expression, I don't like to add the full bottom lip. I just leave a little line there, because then when I go to paint it, it looks a little bit different. And then I'm just gonna draw my chin. So that's roughly what we will do for our woman. So if you wanna pause it, please go ahead and do so, and finish the face of your woman as well. Now I'm gonna go back to her head here because I gotta finish details and we gotta do the hair. So I'm just gonna go ahead up head and finish up my details for my lady here. A little bigger to draw on Sharpie, so I'm just gonna let it be. <laughs> now for her hair, again, she's turned a little sideways, so her part is not directly in the middle, it's a little, little bit more slanted down inside from the top of the head inward. And then we're able to give her her bangs. So it's gonna curve up to the left and outside, right about where her eyes would be. And then I'm just gonna add a little curve for the ear because we can't see much of it. So it's just kind of hiding there. Then I'm gonna go back up to the top and bring the hair on the outside of the head, being very natural, organic with my lines. And then she is wearing a bun, so it just kind of comes to the back of the head. She does have a little bit of hair hanging down, so what I'm gonna do is add that. It also kind of looks like a braid. So if you wanna draw that as well, you can. Otherwise, you can go ahead and just leave it as is. So it's just a little bit of hair kind of peeking around, so I'm just gonna add this little cur curved line and then just make it a little bit thicker. Now for the other side of the hair, we're gonna go back to the middle and we're just gonna curve it down to the side of the head. And then I'm gonna go to the top and just make it a little bit thicker on that side. So once you get done with the hair, I want you guys just to go back to the face and kind of figure out exactly the position you want for it. So her cheek's a little big on this side. I don't mind it actually at all. I might just straighten it out a little bit. And I have to move her chin a little bit from where uh, it's not very center for me. So I got to do that. And then I'm going to kind of bring her head a little bit smaller. And then go ahead and take your eraser and erase any of the lines for the hair, maybe even for the face if you kind of redid some of that. So she should be pretty much done, but again, pause if you need to work on her for a little bit more. And then we're gonna jump to our guy here. All right, so eyes are the same for the guy. We're just gonna go ahead and finish those up. Something that happens with figures too is we tend to draw our eyes really big. And so I wanna encourage you, I'm gonna go ahead and do it on here too while I talk. I wanna encourage you to draw those eyes as a little smaller than you maybe would. Like I would say my lady here, her eyes got a little too big because I zoomed it in and I just got a little crazy. Um, so maybe try and see if you can draw things just a little bit smaller for the eyes than you naturally would. All right, so I did the bottoms and then I added my two curved lines inside and I'm gonna go ahead and do my eyebrows. No, oh, I forgot. For his eyebrows, they're different. So he, he's kind of got an angry look to him. So we're gonna make his eyebrows a little thicker. I'm gonna start with a line on the inside of the eye and then I'm gonna draw my line diagonal up and then down. So just think about like super well done eyebrows like you would get at a salon. <laughs> and then for the, we're going to just kind of taper it down a little so it's a little skinnier. So practice those eyebrows. It's going to look a little funky right now. The sun is going to be a little slightly different because I already drew that line. Uh, but I promise you, we're going to do our glasses over the top so it kind of hides a little bit of the eyebrows. Don't worry, but kind of just play around with what you want that to look like. Now he's got a lot of wrinkles because he's a little older. So what I'm going to do is just kind of focus on this one and then I'll go back to my other drawing and I'll kind of put the details in then. <laughs> Excuse me. So for his nose, since this is the middle, our line's gonna go to the end of it and just go straight up. He's got big, more of a straighter nose, it's a little bigger. And then on the sides, we're just gonna add our two curves. I give him a little bit of nostril. Now again, he's older, so he has more smile lines. On the very end of his nose on the left, I'm just gonna draw a smaller curved line. And then I'm gonna just do a couple little wrinkly lines here 
just about two little to kind of highlight that smile. Now on the other side, we're gonna to go to the tip of the nose and we're really gonna curve this down. Give him a big smile. And then he's a little skinny, so I gotta give him some skinny lines on his face just to kind of like show that a little bit more. And I'm gonna add a little more, almost like a, like, you know, his cheeks are getting a little bit heavier on that side. Now for him to his chin is a little different. Um, he's older, so he's seen some wear and tear out there doing his forming. So I'm just gonna draw some like curved lines for his chin. And a couple of the last little details here. I'm gonna draw uh, this line is kind of to show where his head's coming around, like where your temple would be. Forgot to give him some ears. So let's see. I'm gonna just do some ears with Sharpie. So go ahead and draw just two simple ears. And what we're gonna do with these is make them a little bit bigger. So at the top of the left one, we're just gonna kind of curve it out a little bit more and then add our almost like S shape inside. And then definitely erase the line you don't want anymore. He's got pointy ears. This one kind of comes out a little bit more. And then this one's more of a backward shape here. So go ahead and kind of work on his ears. Don't be afraid to really point them because again, he's a little older, he's bald, so we can see his ears very well. But that's gonna be for our man. So go ahead and pause the video if you need to and do the details and then we'll go ahead and move on. All right, so I'm gonna just do a little bit of those details on my figure here that you see, and then we'll jump to the eyes. All right, so for his glasses, I should say glasses, not eyes. Let's see if I can make these eyebrows just a little, not so big for my guy today. It's gonna to help to make sure that you guys have your nose completed. So if you're still kind of working, maybe just Wait a little longer, pause, because we got to make sure we get that in there. Oh, you know, I forgot something that I think we should add real quick on. I'm going to go back to my large one. Something I think that's really important is his upper lip. So again, for him, I'm just going to draw a very simple upper lip. He's not really smiling. And then I'm going to give him these two lines for the middle. And I think that just exaggerates um, that he is a little older than the woman here. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm just gonna finish up these details, do the same thing. You know, men to have lips too, so we gotta help them. All right, so now we're gonna do our glasses. So it helps to have the eyes and nose ready. I will jump back here now to my large one. And his glasses kind of touch the ends of the eyebrows and they're a little more oval or kind of roundish. There's no right or wrong way to do it. So we would just kind of draw and we want it to be a little bit bigger than his eye, kind of hang down a little lower. So play around with that. If you want them a little bigger, a little smaller, um, that's up to you. And they're just gonna connect it with a U in the middle and then two diagonal lines to the tops of the ears. So go ahead and pause if you need to work on those glasses. But then I'm gonna go ahead and do it on my guy here real quick. I'm gonna make those just a slightly bit bigger because I have a lot of space. All right. So our face details are done. That is a big step for the drawing. And now we're gonna move on to the clothes. We're gonna keep them a little more simple so that way we can go back and add our details with our color pencils in the next video. So let's start on our woman here. She has a very high collar and it's white. So we're gonna do just a little erasing. But on the left and right, we're just gonna draw some diagonal lines down. Now remember she's turned slightly. So you gotta think about that center line for our face, and that's why mine's a little off. So I want you guys to try that as well. Uh, on the outside, we're just gonna add two curved lines down, and then we would erase these parts of the neck and shoulder on the inside. Then I'm gonna draw two more diagonal lines going in. Now they're not connected because I have to draw the ends of the collar. So go ahead and just keep working on that. That's just a little quick sample of her collar there. And then she's wearing a brooch as well. So then underneath that, I'm just gonna add a circle with another smaller one on the inside. Um, maybe don't even add the smaller one yet. If you don't want to, you, we'll probably just put it back with our color pencils later. Last thing for her is from one side of the shoulder to the other, she just has like this really big, it's almost like she's wearing an apron a little bit. So we're gonna just kind of do a little more simple colors for the clothes though, so don't worry. Now go ahead and finish that pause if you need to, because next I'm gonna work on our guy's clothing. 
All right, so we're going, maybe he's wearing like a coat, I said. So we need to add a collar first and then we're gonna work on the lines for the coat. So from one side of the neck to the other, right where it touches the shoulders, we're just gonna draw two curved lines for our collar pretty close together. And it's a little harder to see on with my Sharpie, but I, I'm gonna add a circle right in the middle as, as one of his buttons. This would just be like a normal button up shirt you would wear. And then, you know, clothes gets a little wrinkly. So what we're gonna do underneath is we're just gonna draw a straight line and then curve it out a little bit down. Now it's up to you how much of the shirt you want showing compared to the overalls. So I'm gonna not maybe show as much and let it end there. And then I'm just gonna draw two more curved lines for the start of the overalls as well. You know, and I apologize, what I'm doing is I'm leaving room for my jacket here. And I didn't even think that we haven't drawn it yet uh, because I'll probably have to make these lines a little bit bigger. So what we're gonna do is let's go do his jacket lines before I just kept going down wanting to do his shirt here. All right, so we're gonna start right at the collar and we're just gonna curve our lines down. Cause again, I have to make some adjustments here to my middle shirt. And we're just gonna keep that close together. There's really no right or wrong way to do this. I'm making mine a little wavy because I wanna show, oh, I'll just have that one touch, um, that it's not like a stiff jacket. It's probably pretty warm. And again, if you need to like maybe crop off some of your paper, you can even cut it there if it's a little too long. So now we can go back to our shirt. So I just have to adjust my lines here because I didn't think about that for some reason. I just wanted to keep going. <laughs> All right, but now we just got to kind of fill in the rest. So I mean, we had a pretty good chunk between the overalls here, and this would be like a pocket. So we're just gonna draw two more lines, eh, roughly around there, and then we're just gonna add some center lines for some detail. I'm just kind of using a Grant Woods original image as my inspiration today. Now, if you wanted to get a little more detailed in your buttons and things like that, let's just do that at the end with color pencil, because right now we just gotta focus on our drawing. Um, and then we gotta show where his suit coat and his arm would go. So right roughly about the start of the shoulder, we're just gonna draw some more of those lines kind of coming down. And we're just gonna get mine a little smaller at the bottom because I probably couldn't see all of it. So that's gonna be it for our man's outfit today as well. So you guys can go ahead if you need to pause, please do so finish up those little details for that. Now for our next step, we're gonna focus on our background and the classic pitchfork that he has in his hand. And for that, uh, let's start with pitchfork and then we'll get into the house. Now we're not gonna do too many details on the house just because again, color pencil will be very helpful for all of those. So for the pitchfork, it's roughly gonna be about from our lady shoulder or the guy shoulder, somewhere right in here to his jacket. Um, you kind of can adjust it however you want to find that line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna find my middle. I'm gonna go right about here and I'm gonna draw my line down off whoop, the bottom of the paper, I got a little crooked. And I'm not gonna do anything else just yet. Now I'm gonna kind of create this big U shape. So I'll start right about here, probably go to about there. So that's gonna be the beginning and end. And then I'm just gonna have that line kind of come down through everything I drew, and get roughly to the same point. So yeah, I need to adjust and erase this for sure. Now you may make everything a little bit thicker. So for the bottom, I want to find the center and I'm just going to turn this into the handle for mine. And then I'm just going to give him his little hand kind of poking through. So I'm just going to draw a curve. Yeah, and if you don't really want to add the hand, you don't need to. Maybe you want to kind of cut off some of the paper so you can move his hand up a little more. That's up to you. And then for the rest, so you know, pitchforks are pointed at the end. So it's going to go from small to big. And what I'm gonna do is leave a little bit of room. I don't want it to touch that line just yet. It's a little hard to see, but you can see right there, I didn't, I didn't connect it because now I have to make this part pointy in the middle. Now with the Sharpie, um, my lines get really close together, but for yours, they probably will have, you know, be center all the way till the top. But now go through and if you overlapped anything, you just want to erase any lines that you don't really need anymore. All right, so go ahead and pause if you wanna adjust your pitchfork, make sure it's pretty big. You could probably even drop bigger than the one I have um, just to really show it would be kind of cool. And last thing we're gonna do for a drawing today is just our house. We're gonna do basic for it, um, not add too many details. So that way we're able to put our watercolor wash over it a little bit quicker. 
So we're gonna start right between our heads, roughly about where the cheeks or chin would be for our guy to about the hair. We're just gonna draw a straight line across. And then we're gonna hop over and just do a little bit. We might need to change that positioning. And then same thing on the other side. And this is gonna be for the bottom of the roof. Now we gotta find the center of our people. So for me, it's about the center of the paper. And I'm gonna move maybe an inch or less down from the top of the paper. And I'm just gonna put a dot. And that's gonna be the top of my roof. It's a little hard to see, let me make that bigger. So I know I'm gonna start my lines here and I'm gonna draw them down at an angle. And this can be a little tricky, so I do recommend erasing and trying again so you can get those angles the same, otherwise your roof looks like it's a little off. So just be careful. So I'm gonna go down and on the right side, I'm gonna to get to about his head and then I'm gonna come over. So mine didn't quite meet up from where it was before, so I'm just gonna kind of fix that. Maybe yours a little less, a little more, so just be careful. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. Just being careful, trying to make sure it's gonna be about the same on both sides. So roughly somewhere in there. So again, if you need to pause and adjust that. A little extra detail we're gonna do is we're just gonna make it look like there is a roof. And I'm just gonna do that on the left and the right. But I want you to notice I didn't do it over here yet because this isn't the roof. This is actually part of the overhang on the house which leads me into that part. So I'm gonna go right about the ears. So maybe right where this part ends on her head. And I'm just gonna draw another straight line across. And then I'm gonna continue it on the other side. And that's the overhang of the roof. Last couple details here at the top, we can add, it's a straight line with a small circle and then a small straight line on top, just a little extra detail. Main thing is that window that we talked about at the beginning. So it's gonna be pretty center. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a straight line towards the bottom, right in the middle. And then I'm gonna add kind of like a pointed one, maybe even a little pointier. And then I'll just connect my lines together. So if you're just, you know, again, angles, erase, try again, keep going. And then we're just gonna do a smaller version of that on the inside. Now I'm gonna start in the middle and I'm gonna draw a straight line up, but I'm not gonna reach the top. I'm gonna to go right about there and then I'm just gonna curve my two lines out and then I'll just do a straight line across the middle. All right, we're almost done. Um, all I have to do is a little bit down here at the bottom. So we're gonna start on the right, not all the way at the point of the roof, but I'm gonna scoot in and just draw some of the lines for the pillars that are holding up the house. So one there. Then I'm gonna to go to the, about the right side of the rose window, I'm gonna call it, <laughs> the window at the top and draw two more. I'm gonna do one kind of hiding behind her head. It's a little off center from the middle of the house, which I, I really enjoy. And then I'm gonna do one more on the other side of her head. It's a little closer to her than the side of the paper. And we will eventually do a little bit of shadowing. So I'm gonna add this slanted line and then two more next to it. And that's gonna kind of help us with our shading when we go to draw. If you don't wanna add those, you don't really need to. We could just kind of do that later. But this is the end of the drawing portion for us. Now for the background, I'm gonna let you guys kind of do whatever you want. Inside here at the bottom, this is going to be the house. So don't put anything down here, but around it, it's up to you. Remember Grantwood did a lot of farm, nature, um, or orchards and things like that. So if you wanna put trees, you can. I'm just gonna leave my plane that's gonna be up to you for coloring steps as well. But we are gonna do a quick watercolor wash before we jump into anything color pencil related. So this is gonna to be towards the end of our video. I'm gonna jump back here to me real quick. So what I want you guys to do is get ready to do a little bit of watercolor. We're gonna do not very much, just kind of paint everything a light, light color. And then for the next video, then we'll go ahead and do our color pencil shading, maybe add a little bit more shading with our watercolor. So if you guys need a pause, please go ahead and grab your materials for watercolors. All right. Now I probably won't end up painting my, my whole entire picture right now because I wanna just get a general color for everything, but I'm gonna show you where to put all the color at. Now here's my palette, a little messy, that's what happens with art. My paint and water and all my brushes. So I'm gonna start with my people and kind of move around. So I'm gonna go just a little quicker because again, I'm not gonna do the whole thing with you. I'm just gonna do a little bit at a time. And then I want you guys to take more time and fill in the whole entire paper as well. So pause if you need to finish painting one whole step and then you can move on to the next part with me. 
So I need to make everything lighter. And the way I do that with watercolors is I add more water. So this is a palette. And what I can do is I just take some of my water and I just put it right in there. I'm going to kind of clean mine off a little bit just because I used it previously, but you know, you would want yours to be fresh. Now, if you don't have a palette, I'll kind of give you some tips on what to do first before uh, we put any color down. So I'm going to use my medium brush for a lot of this just because my drawings are not, it's pretty detailed. And so I can do larger brush for bigger areas, but I want to be careful not to get the water in places I don't want. All right, so I'm just going to take some water, put it onto my palette, and I'm going to begin with the clothing. So I'm going to start with my guy here, and I'm going to do this black. So I'm going to start with a gray. We're going to do medium tones, medium to light tones for everything. So I'm going to take a little bit of black, small amount, I really don't want much, and mix it together. So just watch, I would recommend, don't do anything quite yet unless you're certain you got it. And for this, I'm going to paint his jacket, not the overalls going to be a little hard to see just because it is light for me so I might mix mine a little darker but that just means that you guys are going to do it lighter than what you see on my paper. So we're going to be doing that even this little like line down the middle and layers help too so if you let it dry a little and then go back. All right so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to go over the pitchforks. We're going to end up making it gray as well so I'll just add some more layers to my man's coat here. I'm just going to go ahead and do the whole thing with my gray as well. So I want you guys to really take your time. Um, don't You don't need to go fast. I'm just showing you guys generally the color and area that it's going to go. And in the next video, you'll be able to see all the places. Um, and I want you guys to pause at the very end. I'll have my colors everywhere. And I want you to take your time and go back and really make sure you got all the white spots as well. All right, now we're going to keep this gray here, and we're going to also going to do this part right underneath the collar. This is actually going to be black at the end. Try to go around this brooch. And this part of the collar up here is actually uh, white, so don't get anything in there. All right, so you can see as it dries, it starts to get a little darker, and that's what happens with watercolor. So the more layers you add after it dries, the darker it'll kind of get. Now for our lady here, I'm gonna to switch to the larger brush because it's a pretty big area. I'm gonna get a little bit more. I'm just gonna go right back on my gray. Hers is actually going to be uh, red. We're gonna tint it a little more of a red color because it's also black like his. So we need to change the value of it. We're gonna, or the, the tone, I should say, not value. We're gonna change the tone to more of a warmer tone. So I wasn't afraid to just put a little gray in there, but. I'm gonna just keep that red and look how light it is. Really not dark at all. This should not be bright red. I'm gonna maybe add a little more so you can see it. It should be almost like a very light pink. There we go, it's a little darker for you to see. And we're just gonna do the whole bottom. And we're also going to do the brooch. So I would grab then your smaller brush when you're done. I'm just gonna do a quick layer there. Go all the way down to wherever you need to. And I'm gonna do the brooch as well. That'll be red. And then I'm going to jump back over here to my guy. I'm just going to soak all those brushes so they're white. I'm going to use medium for the middle. And for his shirt, it is white. But what I want to do is I want to tint it a little yellow because it's probably not pure white. He's a little, you know, he's a farmer. So he definitely is out in the field doing things. So I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, not much at all. We want it to be mostly water with yellow because we have no white in our palette. Our white is our water. There's a lot of W's. But I'm just going to paint this top part of the shirt my very light yellow. Just kind of almost dirtied up a little bit. So it's very, very subtle. And that's it for that. So if, even if you know like, oh, I won't need that color again, you can always clean it because I might need my palette. Now, for those of you who don't have a palette, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. What you're going to do is you can do wet into wet. So I'll show you for the next step. You can take your brush with just water and just paint it. So my next step is just to paint the whole overalls. So I could just take pure water, be careful not to get into anything else otherwise your color will spread, not too much, and then I'm going to take my colors. I'm going to use just a light blue because it's overalls and I'm just going to paint it and I really don't want a lot so I'm probably not even going to dip the brush again. You could do a little darker blue if you wanted to but we will do some darker values with our color pencils too. So I got a little bit in my yellow, so I'm just going to take my towel, it's gone. 
So that's what I want you guys to do if you don't have a palette. Very sorry, I forgot. <laughs> All right, skin tone, my favorite thing. So skin tone, we do need to mix. For those of you who don't have a palette, um, I will show you what to do, but it might not turn out exactly the way you want, but that's what color pencils are for. I'm gonna keep this red that you see here because skin has little red tones in it. It has red, little orange and a little yellow and brown. So those are gonna be pretty much these three right here are the colors that we're going to use. Now be careful on reds and palettes. This one is a regular red and this one is a red orange. So we gotta be careful which one you use. You can really use either, but they'll change the skin tone a little, diff a little bit different. This is, I just used plain red. So it's on my palette. I'm gonna do a little more water. And then I'm gonna get a little orange and a little brown. So make sure you clean your brush. Now it's gonna probably look super dark on your palette. Like I have too much res and more yellow. And you're gonna be like, whoa, that is a lot. I don't really want it to be that dark. It looks like a bad suntan. Uh, but what's gonna happen is it's gonna get lighter on your paper. So what you can do is if you're not sure about your color, take a sample paper, maybe the one I drew mine a little bigger and test out your skin tone. So on the screen, it actually looks a little yellow, which in real life, it's a little, it's not, it's actually more orange, which I think it's funny that it's doing that for me, if I move it. But it's really not a bad color, but I want you guys just to keep mixing until you find the color you like the best. They do have, the original has a little bit more of a yellow tone, so you could just take some yellow and put a little yellow in there. And maybe just push that a little bit more to the yellows. But I'm gonna go ahead and use that color. And I'm gonna paint directly onto the face. Try to avoid the eyes because we can't add white. So we need to keep those eyes white. If you do get inside, it's okay. Well, I have a couple of tricks to kind of fix that. But you can go over everything else, but eyes is pretty much the only thing we don't want to go over. All right, so I'll show you guys how to do, if you don't have a mixing palette, I'll show you how to do it on the guy over here. I'm actually just going to take a little bit for his hand down here. And what we're going to do do for that is take our water, put it directly on our paper. I kind of went over his eyes a little bit, but that's okay. Try not to. And I'm trying to get too much water. It might not stick the color down as well. And once I have my water, then I can start to just add those colors on it. So I'm going to stick mostly with these yellow oranges here. And I'm just going to paint the skin with the yellow orange. Again, really just dipping it once and then spreading the color around. And you could just leave it as this tone. It looks pretty similar to my other one, actually. It's not too much of a difference. So if you wanna just leave it as your yellow orange here, you can. And then we'll just build up different layers. But then you could just go back, take a tiny bit of brown, and you can kind of go over that again. I'm just gonna add a little too much there. And just kind of spread that around. It might darken his skin a little bit more. Um, so what you can do is take your towel and just kind of get some off if it's a little too much. But that's another way to do it. But when in doubt, just use your yellow orange really lightly with a wet into wet technique. You should be able to do okay. All right, so again, we're almost there. We just got a couple more things to do. Her hair is just, you could either just do straight yellow um, or you can mix a little bit with this skin tone. So I'm gonna take a little bit more of my yellow and mix it with my skin I already had. Notice I'm just kind of using a lot of the colors I already had together. And I'm gonna do um, just the hair. If you wanna use small brush, you can. I just can use the tip of my medium one, just like so. Now, pretty much all we've left is the background. What I'm gonna suggest is to darken his jacket once everything dries. So don't do the pitchfork, leave, leave that a light gray, but take another light gray, don't make it black, and just do the whole coat again. Um, so that way it looks a little bit more like this one, a little darker color. Same thing for our ladies collar over here, but you can kind of see that my pitchfork is barely showing through, it's just a little lighter. And then um, you can add a little bit of brown for the handle if you want, you don't have to, uh, but you're more than welcome to at the bottom down here with some brown, you can just kind of paint right on there. All right, so for the background, I'm just gonna do a quick little wash of color and then we're gonna be done for this first video today. So I'm gonna use my larger brush for this from now on and I am gonna make it lighter. So I'm gonna do some mixing here. So I'm just gonna take that. Then you guys can again wet into wet and put the color on top. So for 
For this, I'm going to mix a tan again. So I can kind of use some of this color. I might just stick with this. <laughs> Excuse me, but I want it to do so much more water because I want it to be bare. So I'm just scooping water in there. So for wet into wet, get your water on and then maybe just take um, some yellow. I would just maybe take some yellow because I'm going to do a little, a lot more of that. Whoa. Try not to splatter everywhere. And I'm going to paint the whole house, but not the, actually, I'm going to go over the window. I lied. We're just going to go over the whole house, top to bottom. We want it to just be a little bit different than the skin tone, but again, sh color pencil shading will, will really help with that. So that's what we're going to do for that. Just a whole light wash of this yellowy little orange color. Think of like an old farmhouse. Some of those values aren't just going to be pure white. Get in behind the ears or hair, I should say, of our people. And then for the sky, so again, pause if you need to. We're going to do a light gray and blue. I'm going to get quite a bit of blue because black uh, darkens real fast. So it's even a little too much blue. One more, one more black. And we're going to do our sky with this, this mixture. So I'm going to turn this real quick and I'm just going to paint the whole sky. This picture is not like a happy cheerful, so we don't want our guy to be this like bright blue uh, because that will mess up the feeling of the picture. Color means a lot when it comes to creating the mood of your art. If you want a more somber look to it like Grant Wood did, you wouldn't want to paint the sky this like beautiful sunset or this like bright happy blue. It's a little not quite what he's going for. All right, so that is generally the look and the colors we want. Now, I do wanna recommend if you wanna go back when it dries, add a more red, add a little more black or gray, I should say, excuse me, for his coat. Same thing for the inside of the jacket. Fit, uh, skin, I would leave alone. I wouldn't add any more there. And for the background, I wouldn't probably do anything for that. So maybe mainly just clothes, add a second layer once it's kind of dry. But I'm gonna go ahead and say, Goodbye to you guys now. So thank you for letting me teach you guys about Grant Wood. We're gonna, I have another video for you. We're gonna do our color pencil steps. So make sure this is completely dry. Maybe wait a whole day. So that way you're just 100% sure. Or you guys can just wait maybe an hour or two and it should be pretty dry by then. So my name is Miss Jessica. Thank you guys so much for joining us today and I'll see you next time.